Hello everyone, this is 16.4, Instantaneous Reaction Rates and Reaction Mechanisms with Chem With Me. Okay, so we'll start off with this figure, and it shows the concentration of H2O2 over time during the comp composition reaction. You'll notice that the concentration is decreasing, and you may ask why. It's because with time, it's being consumed in the reaction. The H2O2, which is a, react a reactant, as you can see from the chemical equation, it's being consumed and it's being turned into a product. And that's why its concentration is decreasing. And the instantaneous rate is the slope of the straight line tangent to the curve at the specific time, which you can see the curve, which shows that the, uh, the concentration is decreasing. When you put a straight line against the, uh, this curve, you, ha you have a tangent, which is a, because it's a tangent to the curve or a tangent to the circle. The slope of this tangent is called the instantaneous rate, and it is calculated if you have the concentration, temperature, rate law or order, and the specific rate const uh, constant. You'll realize that these all are mentioned in the rate law. A reaction mechanism is the complete sequence of elementary steps that make up a complex reaction. You know, you might know that hydrogen and oxygen combine to make H2O or water. This is one step. It's just the combination of these two that makes the product. It's one step. It doesn't require more than one step. This step is called an elementary step. When you have more than one that makes up a reaction, it's called a complex reaction. And most chemical reactions consist of sequences of two or more simpler reactions. And each step is called an elementary step. A complex reaction contains two or more, or more elementary steps. An intermediate is a substance produced in one of the elementary steps and consumed in a subsequent elementary step. You'll realize that this is the opposite of catalysts because catalysts are not consumed in the reaction. Intermediates are produced and then consumed. So they are a product and then a reactant. But catalysts are reactants then products. Intermediates do not appear in the final or net chemical equation. So as you can see in uh, this reaction mechanism, this is called a reaction mechanism. It consists of three steps, okay? It's also a complex reaction because it consists of two or more steps. So one line of this or one step is called an elementary step. And this consists of three different reactions or three different elementary steps. So you have a catalyst, which is Cl, and two intermediates, which are OCl and O. How do you know if these are catalysts or intermediates or none? Uh, you focus on the molecule. So let's look at Cl. In the beginning, it's a reactant. And in the very, very end, it's a product. And it didn't change at all. It didn't combine with anything. And in the end, it returned to its original state. That's why we, uh, that's why we concluded it's a catalyst. Because it reacted, but it wasn't consumed in the reaction. It ended up being the exact same. However, intermediates are the opposites. They are first products and then reactants. So let's look at OCl and O. We see them first as products, and in the final step, we see them as reactants. And you notice in the overall equation, they aren't mentioned. And Cl is written above the arrow because it's a catalyst and it isn't consumed. This all is called a complex reaction, and it's also ca called a reaction mechanism. Okay, so every complex reaction has one elementary step that is the slowest, or slower than the others. The slowest elementary step in a complex reaction is called the rate determining step. In this graph, you'll notice many ups and downs, and that the activated complex and the intermediates are opposites, or on the opposite side. We'll, it will explain the differences of this in the next uh, slide. Okay, so first off, we have the reactants, and then at the very end, you have the products. And then here you have to determine which step is the slow, slowest step or the rate determining step. How do you know? 
Well, you look at the activation energy. Which one has the highest activation energy? Number two, the one in the middle. And the one with the highest activation energy has the slowest rate because they are uh, indirectly proportional or inversely proportional. So when the activation energy increases, the rate decreases because uh, think of it as a limit. You need more to reach the limit. Let's say to get into the honor roll or honor roll or the top 10, you need a 99%. That's a very high activation energy. But for another honor roll, you only need 50%. That's a very low activation energy. So let's say for the 50%, half of the students will get in because the, the limit or the mark they need is lower. That's the same thing with activation energy and the rate. So think of the rate as the number of students and the activation energy as the mark needed. Okay, so here we have the differences between activated complex and the intermediate. The activated complex has a higher energy state, is not stable, and exists for an instant of time. The intermediate has a low energy state, is stable, and exists for a longer period of time. Okay, here you'll notice that you have been given the K, which is the specific rate constant, the rate law, which has the orders in it, and the concentration of N2O5. So what will you do with this? You'll substitute with the rate law, and then you'll get the instantaneous rate. So you use the K, you substitute it, and, the, and you use the the concentration, which you substituted, if there was a power or an order, you'd put it above the concentration. And then you calculated it on your calculator and you figured out the answer. Here, it gives you a bunch of steps or a reaction mechanism and how fast and slow it is beside it. You have slow, fast, fast. As we said, the slowest step is the rate determining step. Why? Because it's the slowest step. And here you can tell that you will be asked to write the rate law. And how do you know what to write? You look at the product of the rate determining steps. So B, which is the same exact thing, it has the same amount of subscripts, the same coefficient, is repeated, um, it's repeated twice. So you put the order as two. However, in this example, you have A, B, and C. They are different and they are not the same elements. So you, you put it in the rate uh, reaction, you just substitute it and look at how many times it's repeated. It's only repeated once, so the degree or the order is only one. And that's it. Thank you for listening and 